Yes. Yeah, so right now in High Point, uh, there is numerous uh, water, swift water rescues ongoing in the city uh, from from the flooding there. Um, emergency management reporting at least four to five uh, that are out there. Um, also seeing reports of uh, flooding in Chapel Hill and Durham. I know uh, Chapel Hill is kind of Jordan's old stomping grounds there. Um, there's a lot of streets that are closed in the downtown Chapel Hill area. If you're not familiar with that, uh, that's uh, University of North Carolina uh, campus. So uh, flooding there. And then uh, we are getting reports that a car is stuck in the water reported. It was halfway up the height of the car on old Thomasville road near English street. Again, in high point, as Scotty mentioned, uh, these training showers and thunderstorms moving across the area. Scotty mentioned the considerable warning that is out, uh, that goes for another three and a half hours and counting, uh, that is for Davidson fourth site, Guilford and Randolph counties. And I say three and a half hours and counting because we have seen that these will be extended if needed be. So even if you're heading to bed, uh, do keep that in mind. I want to zoom into Wake County right now. I want to click on some of these storm reports that are coming in. And man, this is so reminiscent of Sunday. Uh, Hillsborough right now, emergency management reporting that there is flooding ongoing at Orange Grove Road and South Churchton Road here in Durham. Uh, we have a uh, broadcast media report of flash flooding ongoing in Durham. We also have and scotty you just mentioned it and i'm showing the visual on the screen now four reports of flash flooding in durham near unc uh, chapel hill police report flooding at mlk and jordan you know the name of that one estes uh, i think estes okay uh we have flash flooding ongoing right now on uh willow drive we have flash flooding ongoing on Pritchard Avenue, and we have flash flooding ongoing at Bennett Road and Mount Carmel. And those are just the ones that uh, the National Weather Service has uh, entered into the system because I'm sure they're going to have more. And I, I think these three just popped up near Oxford, too. Yeah. And it, it's honestly one of those nights where if you don't have to be outside, don't don't yeah, go outside. Yeah. Don't don't jeopardize you or and Troy, I'm sure will back me up on this working with emergency management. Not only are you jeopardizing your life, but you're jeopardizing the lives who right. are going to potentially come out and save you. So it just does everyone the best. And Scotty, we're we're at night and here we yes. are again. Uh, here we, here we are again. This is the you, you your situational awareness is uh you don't have to be out folks. Please do not go out. If you're on high ground, stay where you are. Speaking of high ground, uh, the Granville County Sheriff's Office reports at least two feet of water in the CG Credle Elementary School in Oxford mm. due to flooding tonight ongoing right now. Luckily, and, and I guess this is the upside, Troy, to it being night. There's there's no one there, hopefully, at the school. Yeah. Right. Um, but, you know, that is going to be something that potentially has impacts uh, as they look ahead to the next school year, two feet of water is going to do a lot of damage in an elementary yep. school. Absolutely. Yeah. Something that we were just talking about, Troy, with the uh, WE alerts, the uh, forecast office there in Raleigh reissued a flash flood warning till 2 a.m. And they were checking with all me broadcast media emergency managers to make sure those WE alerts, those extensions were pushed out. And so far, all the responses I've seen, everyone has got them. So I guess good, kind good. of. Playing back to what you all experienced, you know, last week, uh, you know, it's always better to be safe and sorry to make sure that everyone that can respond can to make sure that those we alerts are going out. Yep. We know after Helene, those wireless emergency alerts were going off, too. And I know even in Mecklenburg County, where we were right on the edge of some of the Helene impacts, those wireless emergency alerts for those considerable and destructive uh, flash flood warnings, they do. They go off each and every time, which, you know, might seem annoying if you're not actively experiencing the flooding, but flooding moves. It, it flows. And so you are receiving that warning for a reason. So no matter whether you got it once, twice, six, eight times, there is a reason that you are getting it. Yeah. And, you know, not let, let's say, you know, not everyone always checks their phone when, when an alert goes off. So it's always good to kind of push those out and just, as we say in TV, we have some of the most, uh, we, we kind of talk about the same thing and, and, and each hit, but that's because we're touching a different audience every time. And, and when these notifications get pushed out, that's the way I see it. Sometimes you push it out to people who may have not seen it the first time. So, and the sad, the sad, scary part is, is we're going to do this all over again tomorrow with that front that's slowed down and almost stalled across the area. 
we're going to have another round of showers and storms that looks to be even more widespread than it is today. So, Scotty, why don't you start us off there? And then I think Frank had some comments about the forecast out ahead. What can what can we expect? Yeah, it, it just looks like uh, we have a, you know, Shay, uh, our panelist there, always said the, the cold fronts come here to die in the in the summertime. And, <laughs> and that's really what happened, you know, with with the remnants or with the Chantal. We had a stalled front, low pressure developed on it. And we had something tropical develop. So tomorrow, that slow move in front, just very, very, very slow, continues to move through the area. We have the heat, humidity. Uh, we've had heat advisories all week with uh, the, just so much moisture and humidity in the air combined with the heat. So we've got all the ingredients there for these slow moving thunderstorms. We were watching it today in the office. We had storms going from southwest to northeast, and then they kind of started drifting southwest, and then they would drift to the West, uh, they're just very, very just meandering out there. There's no real steering currents to steer these storms from one place to the other. So you get those storms to kind of bubble up and train over the same area. And as Troy was talking about, you get those high rainfall rates and you get an hour, two, three hour storm. And it's just going to produce a lot of rain over one location. And that's how you get these flash flooding events. And it's been pretty saturated as well, you know, leading up to this event. So uh, just kind of all the signs pointing together that, um, that there could be uh, some flooding in the area. And I think the ex uh, excessive weather or rain outlook for today was, um, was a level three out of four for a lot of the yeah. Carolinas. Yeah. And it was then specifically in that area that was hardest hit by mm -hmm. Chantal. You can see how the uh, Weather Prediction Center took that all the way up to a moderate, as you mentioned, especially in that area, because the flood tolerance is so low. The basins are so high. The lakes are so high. The creeks and rivers and streams are so high. And you mentioned, Scotty, that, uh, that we could have more rain on the way. So even when we look ahead to tomorrow, we're still talking at least a slight risk tier two. And, you know, if weather is taught us anything over the last week it is watch and monitor for that to possibly change frank what's on your radar for the rest of the week oh frank pulled a scotty man frank <laughs> this is good this is becoming the frank thing now <laughs> it is becoming the frank thing yeah doing it all the but time it will now. forever be called the scotty even yeah. if frank starts yeah, predominantly scotty used to do it all the time ago. yeah <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, we're, we're basically doing this uh, all over again tomorrow, uh, including South Carolina's. In fact, the, the setup may be even a little better for South Carolina tomorrow than it was today. Uh, the We continue to have a uh, an even juicier air mass than usual. We're known for our heat and humidity uh, down here in the Carolinas, and uh, humidity is even higher than usual with uh, some really thick tropical moisture in place. So uh, we're going to have thunderstorms again. Uh, you see Scotty has uh, tomorrow's severe weather outlook in place. And uh, once again, uh, level two of five, some, uh, severe risk. Uh, really, the only threat is for uh, locally damaging winds, uh, just a little more widespread than usual with the, the, the typical afternoon storms that we get this time of year. But uh, the storms are going to be more widespread than we uh, typically see this time of year, too. So uh, so get ready for that and be prepared for those locally damaging winds and also the uh, risk for flooding uh, as well. Uh, we, we did not have a tremendous uh, number of flash flood warnings or severe thunderstorm warnings in South Carolina today. Uh, there were more in, in North Carolina, the risk a little higher up there. But uh, again, tomorrow in South Carolina, uh, we probably do see... Uh, uh, an even busier day than we saw today and uh, probably about the, the same level of activity in North Carolina as we continue to see a, a, an upper level trough sitting over us. It's cooler than usual loft. It's hot and muggy near the surface. So uh, that's uh, an environment where we can get a lot of thunderstorm activity. And and yeah, the, the popcorn uh, uh, just keeps uh, just keeps going uh, every afternoon. And it looks like uh, we'll, we'll see more uh Afternoon thunderstorm activity gets a little less widespread by the time we get to Friday and uh, potentially into the weekend, but uh, they'll still be around and it's still going to be hot and muggy each day. Yeah, I mean, the summertime is really in full swing here. The, the, the humidity levels, the heat index, the storms that are popping off. Um, I almost mentioned this earlier and I will take the opportunity now. NOAA Weather Radio is your best friend. We always tell you to have multiple ways to receive warnings. 
That could be the Weas. That could be Noah. That could be Broadcast. That could even be the Carolina Weather Net. Uh, but we don't want any one of those, including us, we don't want any one of those to be the only way you're getting warnings. And I'm bringing this up because while I'm not here to plug any particular retailer this week, there are some sales happening out there. And so if you are wondering how to Betty ready yourself, your family, um, after these events that we've seen, Get a NOAA weather radio for your house. Get one for your car. Get one for your tent, your RV, whatever it may be, um, because these things work when nothing else works. You know, uh, one other thing, too, James, that I think is important tonight, and I'll, I'll close out and, and uh, bow out on my end, but I think that your timing with that message is so important. You've got to have two or three or four. You've got to have more than two, three or four different sources of weather information and if nothing else, the one thing most of us on this uh, that are a part of this tonight know who Kevin Clazel is. Kevin is a good friend. He used to be at OU, and he's now retired and living not that far from Austin um, and is working with the folks up at Baylor. Um, one of Kevin's favorite sayings is, and I think tonight is a good time to mention this, is hope is not a plan. And as we all go forward, we've got to have a plan. And I and I brought this up with people today uh, in one of my interviews. Um, you know, people say, well, the weather is not that bad most of the time where I am. And I said, I'm not talking about weather. I'm talking about the fire tomorrow morning at 135 in your house when you've got two children and a spouse in your house or a partner in your house. Are, have a plan. It's not a good time to work that out at 135 when you're trying to get a hold of the fire department to come and fight this fire. And the same thing with weather as well. Don't go into things blindly. Have a plan. And uh, if I don't do anything else tonight, we leave. I leave uh, tonight just telling people, have a plan. Exercise it, by the way. That's important as well. And, uh, and, and at least you'll be, uh, you'll be ahead of the curve. 